All right, everyone, welcome back to the channel. The stage is set. Tonight's the night. We've got ourselves a second round of GOP presidential debates that I will be watching. And just like with the first debates, we're going to be talking about what to expect and everything you need to know coming up to these debates. But first and foremost, we're going to be doing like a little bit of an analysis of the first debate because I had no time to cover an analysis video of the first debate in the first place due to a lot of news happening, especially with that mugshot news that took place around the same time. So I'll dedicate a little bit of the beginning of this video as a recap of those debates and some of the highlights and the winners and the losers, which should give you an idea of what to expect in the second debate. So the 2024 presidential elections here in the United States is officially in full swing. We've had the first Republican presidential debate last month, and we've got ourselves a second one coming up later tonight. And the Iowa caucuses are like three, four months away. So election season has officially started here in the United States. And before we talk about the second debate, let's go and do a little bit of an analysis on the first debate. So we'll cover the winners and the losers of that debate. But of course, we all know who the real winner is. It's, it's important to understand the true winner of that debate didn't even show up to the debate because obviously he was 42 points ahead and he chose not to show up in the debate. And instead, he decided to sit down and talk about like the general election and about his campaign with Tucker Carlson on Twitter. And that obviously being former President Donald Trump himself. Now, Trump obviously did not participate in that previous debate and he is not going to participate in the upcoming presidential debate coming tonight. Instead, he opted in to do a one-on-one -on -one interview with Tucker Carlson exclusively on Twitter. Not only did it necessarily get more viewers than the actual debates overall, which again, I, I really could not find the exact number of people that saw that debate. I've heard a lot of like conflicting reports about it. Like there was like one statistic here and one statistic there all of which are coming in all different angles, so I really don't know the exact numbers. I, I got no fucking clue. But I'm pretty sure it was still probably less than the Republican debate viewership in 2015. The first one, which got like around 24 or 25 million, give or take, if I remember correctly. So taking that into consideration, it was probably less than that. And Trump's Tucker interview blew it out of the water, like completely and utterly cock slapped by viewership numbers alone. The Trump Tucker interview that was going on while the debates were going on, around the same time the debates started, the number of views that that interview had was around 250 million with an M. Over 250 plus million actually watched the full thing. And that's saying something. The number of viewers of that debate, which again, I don't know the exact numbers, does not even remotely compare to 250 million people watching one 45 minute interview of a presidential candidate exclusively on Twitter. I mean, like it, it's literally night and day. And again, Trump, in this interview, he literally talked about everything. He talked about 2024, he talked about Biden, he talked about the economy, he talked about immigration, he talked about foreign policy. He pretty much talked about everything and hit on every single issue that he was talking about. Except for that one bit about Epstein, which he touched on, which I did not like. But we're not going to be focusing on the Trump interview. We're not here to analyze and commentate on every little thing that he said in that interview. My focus is on the GOP debate. So, what happened? Well, for starters, let's go out and talk about the winner, the clear winner of that debate being Vivek Ramaswamy. Now, there is obviously a reason why people are calling him the young Trump. This dude is solid on every single issue and every single question that they talk about on this debate. Like, you should have seen a lot of these moments. Like, when Brett Beyer is asking, will you do this or will you do that? Vivek Ramaswamy is always quick to answer. Like, for instance, I actually tweeted about this as this debate was going on. When Brett Beyer asked, who will not send aid or weapons or any funding to Ukraine? Vivek raises his hand. Who will pardon Trump the day of office if he's convicted? 
Vivek raises his hand. In fact, that actually became a very short-lived meme right after the debates took place. There was also this one famous moment where Vivek is like doing the two peace signs right behind Nikki Haley. That I also found pretty based. Vivek Ramaswamy all around is a pretty cool and badass candidate. And, and to me, I really do think he is more of a good 2028 option. Yes, 2028. 24 is reserved for Trump, and we'll get to that later on in the video. So, Ramaswamy 28 for me. Nikki Haley, of course, was trying to be Nikki Haley. For instance, like, she made this really stupid take in the debate when talking about foreign policy, which, when Nikki Haley talks about foreign policy, you already know it is going to be a very awful take. When Brett Beyer brings up the topic of foreign policy, Nikki Haley swoops in with this attack, and I, th I believe she says this about like Ramaswamy or DeSantis, can't really remember correctly, but she goes in and she suggests that some of these candidates want to give Ukraine to Russia or Taiwan to China, which is just so ignorant. Nobody wants to give Ukraine to Russia. Nobody wants to give Taiwan to China. Nikki Haley just wants to put troops, boots on the ground in Taiwan and Ukraine, which is, by the way, the very thing we should avoid doing. If anything, diplomacy is like one of the more peaceful foreign policy options. And Nikki Haley, no surprise, is the female John McCain. So of course, she'll continue funding. Of course, she'll continue sending weapons. Maybe even put troops and boots on the ground there, just for good measures. And when somebody suggests, hey, maybe we should do peace negotiations. Maybe we can actually put an end to this war. Nikki Haley then just steps in and just says, no, you just want to give Ukraine to Russia. You want to give Taiwan to China. Interventionist hogwash. Now, before we move on to our second debate predictions, I would like to highlight one of my number one all-time favorite moments of the first debate, which is right over here. And when I first saw this live, I actually burst out laughing because it was just that ridiculous and that humorous. So why don't you guys take a look right here? I'm the only person on the stage who isn't bought and paid for, so I can say this. The climate change oh, whoa, agenda whoa, whoa, whoa. is a That's hoax. Ridiculous. Ridiculous. The climate this change agenda is a hoax. This and we have to declare and the reality is the anti-carbon agenda is the wet blanket on our economy. And so the reality is more people are dying of bad climate change policies than they are of actual climate change. Governor, right, Governor look, Haley, are you bought and paid for? The is down by 98% hold on, hold on. in the look, last century. Listen, listen, look, listen. Had no, Let, enough, wait, hold no, on, hold I've on. I've had enough. I've had enough already tonight of a guy who sounds like chat GPT standing up here. The last person in one of these debates, Brett, who stood in the middle of the stage and said, what's a skinny guy with an odd last name doing up here was Barack Obama. And I'm afraid we're dealing with the same type of amateur standing on stage tonight. Come on, give me a hug. <laughs> give me a hug just same, like you did to Obama. The same type of amateur. And, and you'll help elect me just the, like you did to Obama, Obama too. Give me that the same hug, type of amateur. So as you saw here, when talking about climate change, when Vivek Ramaswamy answers about his takes on climate change, he calls the agenda a hoax. Now, he didn't actually say climate change was a hoax. He just said the agenda itself was a hoax. Let's keep that in mind, guys. So, in response to Vivek's comments about climate change and the agenda being a hoax, Chris Christie then steps right in and calls Vivek a chat GPT AI generated candidate. And in my opinion, that was literally the highlight of the night. This is exactly the same thing Chris Christie did to Marco Rubio in the first debate back in 2015. Give him a little bit of a roast after his comment, leaving him speechless. And getting a little bit of a reaction to the crowd while you're at it. The fact that he brought up ChatGPT, you, you can hear the whole crowd laughed right afterwards. And I don't even like Chris Christie, and even I thought that was hilarious of him. And that's quite literally the only major highlight Chris Christie gets. Throughout the rest of the debate, he's been boring through and through. 
So Chris Christie calls Vivek Ramaswamy an AI-generated Obama, keeps comparing him to Obama. But while we're on the topic of chat GPT, the only candidate in that debate stage that I can really see as somebody who is AI-generated is Ron DeSantis. Now, DeSantis did not completely fall flat in his face. You know, he did not have the worst debate performance overall. To be fair, he was actually pretty solid and a lot better than what you would expect. But for him, it was a far from ideal performance. And he was just low energy and he was just so underwhelming. He didn't attack people and when he got attacked, he really wouldn't respond. He gave like the note card style pre-prepared answers. So he really came off very computeristic in that debate. And even though he delivered what he was saying without making a complete and total ass of himself, he still was underwhelming. And I mean, again, there are some stuff that I do like what he said. Being a resident of his governing state myself, like when on the topic of education, DeSantis was able to give himself credit for dewokifying the school systems here in Florida, getting rid of critical race theory and A, B, C, D, E, F, G ideology stuff and whatnot. I do like what he did with that, and I gotta give him the benefit of the doubt. He also gave himself credit for leaving everything open during COVID, although I do want to hammer him on saying that he was the only one who kept schools open during COVID. Schools were closed from mid-March up until August, even going ahead into January of 2021. I had to get my diploma mailed to me because the global bastard just fucked everything up. So I gave you props for leaving everything open during surges, but you did not keep everything open while COVID was going on just so we are aware. But he did talk about his accomplishments, some of which I do like and I do agree with, and I will give him props to that. But DeSantis is still a robotic candidate and comes out very chat GPT-like, as Chris Christie would put it, especially being his campaign, low energy, and effortless. So that was a little bit of a half-assed analysis of the first debate. Now let's move on to the second debate and discuss what to expect there. Now, there are seven candidates that are expected to be on the debate stage tonight. Ron DeSantis, Vivek Ramaswamy, Nikki Haley, Mike Pence, Chris Christie, Tim Scott, and Doug Burgum, this North Dakota governor who actually did pretty fairly well in the first debate, surprisingly enough, for somebody who governs a state that nobody really knows about, except for the five people that live here. Uh, no offense to anybody who lives in North Dakota, by the way. So it's the same people from last debate, minus one person, and that is the Phil Scott wannabe Asa Hutchinson. I'm not even sure if he's even still running. I don't know if he dropped out or not, but... He is not on this list, but he wouldn't even have a remote chance of clenching the debate, let alone the nomination, considering that he is literally the Phil Scott of the South. Okay, never mind, I just checked, he is still running. Kinda shocked that he hasn't dropped out yet. Anyway, it's the same people, minus one. The debate should start around the same time, 9pm Eastern. Its setting should be at the Ronald Reagan Presidential Library in Simi Valley, California. Whoa, that's a very deep blue area. It will be on Fox News, just like the first debate, and it will be moderated by Dana Perino, Stuart Varney, and Ilya Calderon. So, neocon, neocon, and Latino neocon. Wow, what a great lineup. Now, just like with every debate, it will either hurt or harm the candidate on stage. Normally, the first debate is like the indicator of where the candidate stands, but realistically speaking, you should always pay attention to every debate because the candidate that you just saw on the first may not show the same result on the second. They might either do a better job than they did or a worse job than they did. For starters, remember what we've discussed earlier in the video about the first debate? Well, I expect it to be just similar to that. I will expect most of these candidates to start repeating and saying exactly the same shit, just like last time. Although some of them, again, are genuine with it, and some of them are pretty obvious with it. You could really tell that they don't exactly have any signs of improvement since the Republican Party of 2012, and even to an extent, 2008. And that's kind of what we saw in the first debate, 
And that's more than likely what we're going to see tonight, despite candidates like Vivek Ramaswamy standing out and sticking out like a sore thumb with what he is saying. With the exception of Vivek, and even to a lesser degree, Ron DeSantis, none of these people went out there and were talking anything of substance here, and more than likely won't. And I expect tonight that we're going to see a lot of these candidates talking about the same old platitudes. Oh, uh, we're going to talk about cutting the debt. We're going to talk about lowering taxes. We're going to talk about economic prosperity. And I'm not saying that those issues are not important, but I refuse to hear about taxes and debt for the one millionth fucking time from these people that get into power and don't even do anything on that issue alone. Now, remember when I said that Vivek Ramaswamy killed it in the first debate? Well, I think he's going to do exactly as good as he did tonight. Maybe even better. In my opinion, I think he will do much better tonight. He's going to continue to rail against the establishment. He's going to continue being that stern, smart-sounding guy on stage. And he is going to stand firm for what he says with whatever question he gets asked by the moderators. Oh, and speaking of moderators, one of them is a Spanish-language journalist named Ilya Calderon. I bet you when somebody starts speaking Spanish... I don't know who it will be, but when somebody starts speaking Spanish, the moment somebody does it, Vivek Ramaswamy is going to pull a Trump and say, you know, I may be an Indian dude who speaks a little Hindi, but come on guys, we live in the United States, speak English. That right there will be the chat GPT of the second debate, if it ever happens. Hell, maybe Chris Christie will have another opportunity to crack another roast on Ramaswamy if he ever says that, that alone will make that moment exponentially better. I don't know if it's going to happen tonight. This is just a little bit of a bonus. But if it happens and somebody on stage speaks Spanish, I will not be surprised to see Vivek Ramaswamy rant about how Americans should speak English and that we are an English-speaking country as a clapback, just like what Trump did back in the 2016 election. I'm already sold on Vivek, but here's the kicker. I am not Vivek 2024. I am Vivek 2028. I mean, he's young. He's still young. He's got a lot to prove. Most people are going to vote for Trump anyway. Trump has pretty much solidified the GOP nomination anyway. If anything, he would make a good vice president for Donald Trump. Donald Trump seems to like him, and his core supporters seem to like him too. And really, if you are a Vivek Ramaswamy supporter, you should really be focusing for 2028, not 2024, and being okay with him being his VP for four years. Now, Nikki Haley, where do I even begin? Is she going to continue harping about how dependent we are for Israel, even though they're pretty much nothing more than just our strategic ally? Not in any way ruling that out a bit. Is she going to start advocating for the fact that we need to do more in terms of our foreign policy and, you know, put more boots on the ground? Definitely likely the case. After seeing her in the first debate, and what she's been saying, I expect her tonight to start playing the women card at times, and I expect her to suggest her grossly unpopular, interventionist, warmongering ideas of what we need to do. Nikki Haley is by far the worst candidate when it comes to foreign policy. It's always the, we need to do more about our foreign policy stance. Let's go bomb these poor innocent countries for absolutely no goddamn reason. Oh, Ukraine is stalling and is pretty much not making any progress against Russia? That's okay, we'll just continue to aid them to oblivion, even though it's not really going to change the outcome or really anything, and it might negatively impact our economy. Oh, and for good measures, why don't we send our troops in there as well? You know, we need to give them a little bit of that boost to make sure evil Putin doesn't invade Europe and start World War III. Wow, great idea. Put an end to a war by advocating for more war. That's Nikki Haley's foreign policy. And Mike Pence is no different. I am very surprised that this guy is still running in the race. His campaign is pretty much dead, and he's just a loser. That's all he's really good at. A lot of people think that his campaign died when he said that Americans weren't his concern, when in actuality, his campaign died as soon as he announced he is running. 
His campaign was already DOA. I expect Mike Pence, or rather, Mike Piss, while being okay with debating, I mean, he did surprise me a little bit in the first debate, I actually expect him to do fairly okay in the second debate, but it's not going to help him in the polls. Everybody already knows who he is and his reputation. America is not my concern. After all, he's more worried about Ukraine and his own special interests than our own, so what gives? Tim Scott. Don't really expect much from him. I don't even know if he had any speaking time in the first debate, but I expect him to say similar things to what some of the other candidates do, and on occasion, pull out the race card when necessary, just like when Nikki Haley pulls out the feminine card when necessary. Doug Burgum. For a guy who is the governor of North Dakota, who I know nothing about, didn't really expect him to do super well in the first debate, which he did. Will he do that well in the second debate? I'm not so sure. Really, I'm not that sure how well he will do tonight, knowing how little I know about him. But if he does well, he does well. But it doesn't necessarily mean people are going to be sold on him, since, again, nobody knows who he really is, and 44% of the party are already sold on who they are voting for anyway, in addition to, I don't know, the other 20%. And of course, we can't forget about Chris Christie. Everywhere he goes, there's always an earthquake happening. Gee, I wonder why. I know California is situated on the Ring of Fire, but not every earthquake is caused by the Ring of Fire. Chris Christie just landed, so it's not just a Pacific Ring of Fire making its usual little shifts that lead to 6.0 magnitude earthquakes could just be him landing. Okay, that's enough with the body shaming. What is Chris Christie going to say this time around? In the first debate, he made the chat GPT joke. What joke is he going to make next? As much as many people and most people already hate Chris Christie, when he debates, there's always this one crazy thing that he says that turns into the highlight of the debate, whether that be with the Marco Rubio situation or whether that be with Vivek's situation in ChatGPT. Is it going to happen in this debate? I'm actually anticipating one tonight. I mean, if you're an also-ran and your policies suck, you're weak on a lot of issues, and you're not campaigning very well, your campaign sucks by the way, the best thing you can do is be funny in the debates and crack a stupid joke on one of your opponents on the debate stage when they say something. It does help with memes and whatnot, maybe even your campaign, but if there's really nothing you can really do and you've made the debate stage, that's the best you can do, and that's what Chris Christie does. Chris Christie sucks, so he makes a stupid joke that make people laugh. And last but not least, we got Florida Man. Ron DeSantis did very well in the first debate, and you know what? I expect him to do well in this second debate. He'll harp about his accomplishments, such as, again, removing woke from the schools, sprinkle in his COVID response. That is, if they bring it up in the debate. Going after companies that cancel TV shows for containing two lesbian girls kissing, but for some reason is okay with having men dress like women, ball dancing, twerking, and running around with rubber dicks in front of little children. I don't understand how that's more appropriate than two cartoon lesbians kissing and hugging. Please explain to me. But yeah, DeSantis is going to be a good debater, like he always is, regardless of what you think of him. And we saw that in the first debate. But I also expect him to be that same old, robotic, also-ran candidate that we saw on the first debate as well. Like I said earlier in the video, he's the only one that I could call an AI-generated candidate. Really the same old things and not resenting with anyone. So that is what I expect from tonight's debate. Now, just like last time, Trump will not be at this debate. I don't think he really has any reason to anyway. And no, there is not going to be another Tucker Carlson interview on Twitter. I think Trump is just going to sit down and watch the debate and see who is a viable VP candidate. Because again, that's literally what this primary is. Who is more fit for a vice presidential position or who would fit well in a cabinet. I do expect Vivek once again to win this debate straight out, even though we know Trump is the real winner here. But I expect Vivek Ramaswamy to be the onstage winner. I won't be surprised after the primaries, Donald Trump picks up the phone and calls up Vivek to join him on the campaign trail. That I think is the most likely option out of this. Donald Trump will be watching these debates. 
He'll laugh at some of the hilarious moments from all of these candidates who don't have a remote shot at beating him, let alone beating Joe Biden, maybe praise Vivek Ramaswamy and wait for the right moment to call him and ask if he wants to join the campaign. I think Vivek will say yes to that offer. So just like the first debate, Trump will not be participating in it and also, Trump not being in the debate is not the only thing that's the same. Just like the first debate, tonight's debate also coincides with a soccer game that I will be watching. Inter Miami plays Houston Dynamo in the US Open Cup final tonight. Really big game. And what's even worse is that it literally starts at the same exact time that the debate starts. So you know what? I don't really have a difficult decision. I'll just pull a Kevin Harlan and watch both at the same time because why the fuck not? I'll tweet about the debates and the game at the same time and cover them both on Twitter. So just like what Kevin Harlan famously said, I'm calling both games. I'm getting confused. What game are you calling? I'm calling both games. <laughs> so those were my two cents. Let me know what you guys think about the upcoming debates. Will you be watching the debates? Who do you think will stand out? Who do you think will be the disappointment? Who do you think is going to be the surprise? Who do you think will do well? And who do you think will completely flop? Who do you think will drop out of the race after this? Don't forget to leave all your thoughts in the comment section down below as I always end the conversation down to you. And with that being said, thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys enjoyed, be sure to hit that like button down below. And if you're new around here, be sure to subscribe to the channel and ring the little notification bell. Be sure to follow me on all my social medias. Links are in the description below. Share this video around with your friends, families, boyfriends, girlfriends, enemies, whomever. Definitely helps me out a lot, helps the video grow, and helps grow the channel if you share this video with whomever you know. I will be talking about the debate as it's going on on my Twitter, so make sure you're following me there. I will also make sure to hopefully post an analysis video on time with no news on the way because last time we had the Trump mugshot that kind of fucked everything up, but I'm hoping that does not happen, so make sure you're following me on Twitter and subscribe to the channel with those noties on because as always, I am your news guy. I'm here to keep you guys up to date and commentate what's going on, so stay tuned for that. And again, since I'm watching the soccer game at the same time, I will be posting game reactions there as well. So if you get a little confused as to why there's one tweet about the debate and the other about a soccer game I'm watching, and the two absolutely don't make sense with one another, you'll see why, because I'm watching both. So anyways, guys, like, subscribe, ring notifications, and until then, take care, talk soon, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.